Hey, what's up, you guys? Welcome to another one of these vlog podcast type things that I randomly do sometimes. I am here with a good friend of mine who I have known for, God, I don't even know, more than seven years. It's At least seven. At least seven. Confirmed. At least seven. We, we were friends and co-workers and boss underlings and roommates and all kinds of things at grocery store jobs. But I got my friend Dan here, if you want to introduce yourself. Hey guys, I'm Dan. And uh, yeah, we're just here to talk and reminisce and record it and see what happens, really. So, a little bit of backstory about us, like, I guess, yeah, we met at a grocery store job. I, I was looking for work, and I found a grocery store job, and Dan was the manager, the grocery manager. And, uh, yeah, he, I worked under him for a while and we became friends with a lot of mutual interest in video games and stuff like that. And, uh, then at some point we became roommates. I don't remember how that exactly, like the time frame of that, but yeah, that's, that's, that's weird you bring it up. Cause like, I, I remember the first day you started, I remember this meeting and like i remember us first talking about video games which is kind of like was like the, the bond mm -hmm. and i can't remember why we moved in together i mean i remember like like it made sense but like i don't recall like how that happened but it but it happened yeah it, it must have been like we were working together for like three or four years at that point, I want to say. Maybe a little less than that, I don't know. But yeah, we ended up becoming roommates for a year, right? It was a year, mm -hmm. and we were gym buddies, and uh, yeah, just doing our thing, and it was pretty cool, and I forget why it fell apart. I think we just decided to go our separate ways, and like... Yeah, life was pulling us different ways. Jobs were taking us different places. And yeah, we just kind of separated for a little bit there. And it's been, it literally has been like seven years since I've last talked to yeah, you. Yeah, you want, you want to preface that right now. It's, <laughs> today, this podcast marks uh, seven years. Yeah. So at least since the last time we talked. Yeah, so we're we're catching up live for you all to see you know i mean that's that's a voice a voice from the past bro <laughs> yeah so we back in the days when we worked at the grocery store together we had a mutual boss who was a real dick <laughs> like he would he would come around and like if there was one item that was like unstocked on the shelf he'd be like i mean come on brother are we going out of business i mean duh and like that was his voice it's not an even not even an exaggeration that what was that, his that voice. Was the voice that was the voice yeah yes, that's the voice and that voice has stuck with us the man is now dead he's gone folks he gone. had he had a brain aneurysm because the bullshit of life got too much for him i guess and yeah unfortunately like maybe it's not funny to joke about but yeah he had an aneurysm and died and he's gone but the spirit lives on the spirit <laughs> lives on we do his voice constantly throughout our days i mean just anytime there's something that's just slightly even even slightly indicating that it might be bullshit <laughs> <laughs> that voice comes out. I don't know if you've got something more you could say about it, but yeah, I mean, he was just he he was a character. He was like I I've never met anyone else in my life like him. Like he was completely just like just unique in in that sort of way. Just um, he uh, I don't know, he. He was gruff. He was, yeah, he was hard to deal with sometimes, but, and, but it was, it was, I think it was, what's so funny is even though like, like I always dreaded our interactions with him, 
But in the back of my mind, I was always, you know, cataloging the funny little quotes he would say, the little funny things. He didn't, it didn't, even on the worst day where I was, you know, things were going wrong, he would still say like something or he would act in a way that was just so funny. Yeah. It just, you know, just stuck with you. But yeah, just, uh, and yeah, it's just so funny. Like I still, he still uses his voice. Yeah. You know, he's just such a character. Well, yeah, from our stalker days, our days as a grocery stalker, we came up with an idea for a TV show that kind of models The Office, I guess, um, called Stalkers. And we'll let you use your imagination because we don't want you stealing our ideas here. But, uh, yeah, we we had so many funny, random, pointless nights. It's, it's stupid comedy writes itself. And I don't know, you want anything more you want to say about the whole Stalkers script? Yeah, I think it was just, it's like you said, like there was, you know, so many like just little things that would happen um, that it was just like, he'd make you laugh or, you know, just, or like dealing with like a, a customer, you know, or like, you know, dealing with someone who, like a, someone like, Thompson, you know, who's was that just a character was such a character. And um yeah, like like over the years Bill and I would just kind of keep track of all these just little moments and little stories of like what happened to us and like I always thought it'd be really cool and really funny to uh to do like a TV show, kind of like like the office mockumentary style. Um, about a night shift crew and kind of just like the shenanigans that, that happened to them. Yeah. Because there was a lot of shenanigans. Like so many characters, especially third shift like that, so many characters showed up. I, th I think I think it's a prerequisite that like if you're going to work third shift, you have to be a character. Like, yeah. Like there was like, there was like no normal person working third shift <laughs> no no they were just, definitely not no but yeah one thing led to another and uh we both just kind of got fed up with the job eventually as you do with as a stocking job you don't really do that for life hopefully nothing wrong if you do though and uh but yeah we went our separate ways and uh got different warehouse jobs and all kinds of things within our area and uh I don't know anything else you want to add on to that or Yeah, I think like like yeah, like you like yeah, you you left um and I, I stayed on for probably about a year or so after you left. And yeah, that was like when I was kind of getting to my tipping point and it was just like I just had to bounce, had to get out of it. And um yeah, I think like uh, after that, we we kept in touch for a little bit, um, but then then yeah, I think just eventually kind of just you know I think life just kind of got in the way, and then yeah, that's where we're at right now today. Yeah, it was like a very long time. We were we were actually to be completely accurate, the last time we talked. Dan was looking to become gym buddies again at a gym, but I had moved about like 40 minutes to an hour away, and I just didn't see how it was possible to find a good in-between ground, and uh, it just didn't happen, and then like we just, time just kept ticking, and before you knew it, seven years had gone by, so uh, absolutely no hard feelings or anything, just time got away from us, and... Uh, that's yeah here we are today finally trying to make amends for that and yeah yeah so uh what do you want to talk about bill <laughs> no no i mean no, we can keep this in this no this is this is fun they love this um <laughs> no this is good i think uh yeah just uh we, so we've been, we've been talking about video games yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So I guess. So I was surprised when, but also glad that you had that you finally moved away from the 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 church of Nintendo. Yes, and and, and embraced the Xbox and PlayStation in your life. Yes, yes, I have. To the point even where between the choice of Spider-Man 2 and Mario Wonder, I chose Spider-Man 2 on the PlayStation over Mario Wonder, which I am putting on the back burner until I feel like playing it, I guess. I don't know. So, like, does your does your fan base know that you've, been, you've like, predominantly been, like, a Nintendo what kind of fanboy? I think well, so, but... Yeah, like, and so... And so can you can you tell us like like how recent has it been of like you having access now to like the Xbox library and the PlayStation library like how like how long is like can you expand on that like how um well i think the PlayStation library i've had more access to since like 2018 or 19 and i've been doing videos on that the Xbox i recently just bought other than that, I played my ex-girlfriend's Xbox, um, and I recorded some videos back then. I think Tony Hawk and Resident Evil 2 I did on the Xbox. Um, but, yeah, uh, it's a pretty recent thing. As of the last couple years, where I've actually owned all three consoles and have actively participated in, like, in the PlayStation and Xbox libraries. But yeah, like I said, it comes to a point sometimes now where I prefer things like Spider-Man 2 over Mario Wonder, which is something maybe kid me would be like, <gasps> what are you doing? So like when, when you, so, so since you've now had like the PS5 and the Xbox one, um, is there like, are you kind of daunted by like the the potential backlog and like like what like what you've been missing out essentially the last you know oh yeah 15, 20 years absolutely yeah there's there's, there's is, is there anything that you like have been wanting to play that like you just never never did in that time like an older game like something you know because you've been I know you've been mostly covering new stuff but like. Well, there's the Batman Arkham series that comes to mind. Um, that is available on Switch now, I think, too, but obviously in less quality than it would be on PlayStation or Xbox. Um, but yeah, the the Arkham Batman games come to mind. Um, there's a lot of... Like, when I think of Xbox now, I think of Rareware. And just, I, I like to have access to all those classics, but I have played most of them. Um, PlayStation is kind of more of a, like, follow the news, and if there's something cool on, happening on the PlayStation world, I like to jump on that, but otherwise, I, I can't think of anything specific right now. Really? Not even, like, um, like the Uncharted games, God of War... Yeah, not really. Like surprisingly, I know that they're very good, but I just don't. I still don't have the interest in them as much as you would think. That's surprising. Interesting. Hmm. He doesn't agree, folks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I'm. I'm just. I would. I would just would have thought like. You know, because I know. I know you. You. You hadn't. You. You've been only kind of been a part of the Nintendo sphere of influence and uh i would have thought like you know when you got in a playstation and an xbox you would be kind of like trying to make up for lost time with with maybe some older older games older franchises yeah no i, I definitely i want to i just i don't know enough i think to is what, know where to start what are what are you what are you feeling what kind of what kind of game what, do you, that you, what, game, what kind of game do you want to play? Well, I really like the games like Skyrim that are kind of like RPG, but not JRPG, where they're they're very action-focused, and... What about Fallout 4? 
see, I don't know anything about it. I would have to play it to know anything. Well, there you go. All right, Fallout 4, there you go. And I've heard rumors of a remaster of Fallout 3. I've heard there's rumors of Oblivion. Yeah, Oblivion and Fallout 3. I've heard both. I don't know what's true, what's not, but... um, Yeah, that would be pretty cool. What... What would you want to see remade? What would I want to see out of anything? Nintendo included? Anything. Any anything. Uh well there's the Perfect Dark remake, which, you know, who knows where that's at right now. Wait, 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 wait. You haven't heard about it? Wait. Remake? Yeah. I, I know there's the well, I know there's like Okay, well yeah, I know there's like a new Perfect Dark coming, but that's yes. not, that's not it's not a I mean I guess it it is it is a it's a restart. It's a restart. Oh, is that yeah. what it is? Yeah, it's not. It's not a. It's not a remake of our. Ah. The first, it's like a. It's a new thing. Oh, see, I didn't know that. I thought it was just re uh, reimagining of the first game. Basically. No, no, it's like it's a, like a new story. Oh. Well, I'm still excited about that. That that's the wrong answer. <laughs> <laughs> the Lee Thompson wrong question bolt. to the wrong answer. It comes out every time. But, uh, oh, geez. Wait, what was the original question? I again? mean, it's too late. No, um, <laughs> it's, uh, if you could have any, any game remastered. Ah. And I'll, wait, 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 any game remastered, and I'll even, I'll even, I'll twist the rules. You can, <laughs> you can have it remastered by anyone if that's, if you want to, like, add that in there. Oh, yeah, this, this good, this touches on things that we've talked about in the past in many days at the grocery store. I mean, Nothing else to do but talk about what a Bethesda Zelda might look like. I mean, uh, Skyrim, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Geez, I don't know. Bethesda Zelda comes to mind. Well, um, yeah. Elder Scrolls Hyrule. I made a whole video on it. Not too well. 2018 or something. I made a video. Um, what it would be like if you could play as different classes in Hyrule and, you know, like Argonian could be like Zora or like you could play as a Goron or whatever it is and level up skills that would pertain to those races or whatever, you know, like I would really love to play a game like that. Hmm. Okay. So like an Elder Scrolls Hyrule, Bethesda handling Zelda... Assuming they don't make it like Starfield, I guess, where it's kind of eh, middle of the road. Hmm. Hmm. So, seeing how you've you know, you've already you you played Skyrim a bit, like what what would be what would have to be different enough from Skyrim to make it like like a Zelda game? Because I feel like it's. I mean, it's not obviously it's not apples to apples, but. You know, it's fantasy, you know, you're the hero, you know, you're in this huge world, like, you know, like, I, I can't, like, how much more, like, is it just like, oh, you slap a Triforce on the cover and, and off you go? Yeah, well, I think it is a lot, a lot of it is the world, yeah, like, the world will kind of write itself, speak for itself a little bit, and the characters that inhabit that world, um... But yeah, mostly it's just the the differences of like when you think about, okay, Link is a Hylian, what he can do. We know what he can do because that's like every Zelda game. What Zelda herself can do, what the Sheikah could maybe do, what the Gorons could do, what the Zora could do. So you, what you're saying that so you would you would play a Zelda game open world, but you you would actually pick like an individual character. You yes. You wouldn't you wouldn't pick a race. You're saying you're picking a character. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, you like picking a race is part of it to like in the create a character process, but cuz but I yeah, cuz I kind of feel like Skyrim has so many races that like there's kind of parallels. Like the Zora are kind of like Argonians. Yeah. You know? Like just kind of Yeah, I can see what you're saying. Yeah. Um but it's, yeah, I, I get I get what you're saying, but I feel like like the last two Zelda games have kind of like 
they they have ventured into the Bethesda territory of open world. Um, but I, I'm I I haven't played. You could probably speak more on it than I can, but like I don't know if the like the story in the in the recent Zelda games or the side stories, like I don't know if they if they, I, don't, I don't know how well they can match up to what Bethesda does on a writing scale. Yeah, I would say it still doesn't match. Right. Because uh, Breath of the Wild was very skimpy on its story, and uh, it was good for what it was. But it felt very much like Zelda, and it felt very empty at spots. And then Tears of the Kingdom is kind of just more of the same, a little bit more... A little bit more storytelling, but nothing as deep as Bethesda goes with its branching dialogue and, you know, just even... I, I mean, imagine imagine if you were to play, like, a Bethesda-styled Zelda game where, like, you could join, like, the Garuda. And, yeah. And, like, and like, like they were... Because they, they would be a faction, and you would do quests for them, and, like... Or you could join the Gorons, and or you could join the Zoras, and um, yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah, I mean, I mean, one hundred percent. I mean, I think like you know, it's you know, it's it's kind of it's kind of it's kind of it's I would say it's kind of tough, but like we like it's obviously Nintendo knows what they're doing with Zelda, but it, it's. It's it, it's tough sometimes because you you also love stuff like you know what Bethesda does with uh, Elder Scrolls and Fallout where it's like you're like man like like if only Nintendo if if Nintendo were to put this level of storytelling or side quests or factions or like you know like into into their games like that would just be like so much better like it would be like mm -hmm. like like they're already like like excellent at doing like gameplay right like that's stuff they just they're so good about but like but imagine if there was like like um you know full voice acting and you know like or even like you, if you could like make decisions in a zelda game yeah you know like yeah i think that would be huge to that's what that's what i think i want is like a decision based hyrule where like what you do matters and dictates like where you stand in the population, you know, whether you're mo leaning more towards Gerudo or more towards Goron or. Do you do you think there could ever be a Zelda game, where, uh, where you don't play as Link? Like, oh do you, yeah. Do you think Nintendo would ever do that? Where it's like I don't know that Nintendo would ever do it, but it could definitely be done. Oh yeah, yeah, but I mean, yeah, it's, because I, I think like that that would have to be like. Like the the way the way they do it, like I don't know, I don't know if they could like be like, oh, you, you play as Link and you make decisions. I don't think they would Nintendo be okay with that. But I think if it's it was like like your character, you know, and then it's but yeah, I don't know, yeah. But then it's like then but I guess then the the argument is like what that. But then there's Skyrim or there's games like The Witcher, right? It's like those games are doing they're doing that sort of thing. If that if you're if you're if that's what you're wanting. Yeah. Uh, but you didn't quite answer my question. I said, what what game do you want to see uh, remade? Completely, like, nothing changed at all? No, 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 no. Like, it can be, like... It can be, like... Like, like the Super Mario, Super Mario RPG. Like, how that's, like, a... Like that is a, like, modern-day-looking HD, like, remake. Like, like that. Like, what what would you want that hasn't been touched yet to be like it's the same game but it's been redone jet force gemini that comes to mind uh yeah jet force gemini like uh, even something weird like watchdogs 2 that i'm let's playing right now uh it would be neat to see like what modern touches they could add on to it um 
But yeah, well, what instantly came to mind is Jet Force Gemini. So I guess there's something there that in my brain that says Jet Force Gemini is one that needs to be remastered. <laughs> I don't know. Hmm. Okay. I would love Morrowind to be remade. That's like that's like my my deep cut. Like I. Um, Which is weird that they're jumping ahead and to, skipping to it. Oblivion. To, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I think I think Morrowind is like um probably a bit too obtuse and unforgiving of a game for like your average player maybe that's why bethesda is kind of nervous about maybe doing that one you know not doing or not doing that one i should say but i would i would love to do uh, 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 man if they did a remake of that i would oh my gosh <laughs> bam I am. Um, I actually, I actually installed it a couple of weeks ago, and you know, I put a couple of mods on it to kind of like, like HD and just like remove like all the the fog in the distance. And it's like the game, it's still janky. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, it's still janky as hell. But man, it is like it just took me back, and I'm like, man, it is just it's so awesome to be in this world again. Like I would, man, I would. Man, what I wouldn't give for them to, either them or some other studio to to remake it would be awesome. What other studio would you want to handle a Bethesda game? That's a good question. Um, I'm trying to think. There, there's a couple studios out there that that have kind of made like a name for themselves for, um, for doing remakes, and their names elude me at the moment. Maybe. Maybe because I've just been playing a lot of Cyberpunk, like CD Projekt Red. I think they've they've turned that game around uh, so much that like if they're willing to if they're willing to release a game three years ago, but then spend the next three years trying to fix it, yeah. you know, and like make something that's like really really fun, like you know, maybe them. Like, yeah, I can see it. So, you you've been doing your YouTube channel for how long? Uh, since two thousand seventeen is when Good Old Days Gaming started. Mm-hmm. And so, you you know your channel's been growing, and you know we were kind of just talking about this uh, beforehand that you know it's gotten to the point where you know you're you know, you're able to, you know, quit your job and make this like your full time thing, right? Yes. So you mentioned that you were feeling you you weren't the most proud about it. I guess yeah. I'm more proud about like where where you're at now, which which is like crazy to me. But I guess like I'll let you kind of go over what what we talked about first, and I'll kind of. Yeah, well, it's just kind of the whole you sit at home playing video games for a living kind of thing, and it's it's hard to sit with, it's hard to sell, it's hard, especially when you're single and you're trying to date, it's hard to like sell that as a a valuable thing, and it's hard not to think negatively about it in a way. Which I think stems from when we were kids, like you would understand this since you're like of the same age as me, a little bit older. Um, when we were kids, it wasn't cool to like video games. You know? It was kind of a nerdy hobby. Okay. So, in recent times, that's not the case. Video games are widely accepted now. Right. But something still lingers in me that says it's not cool or something. And like, and also I want to preface that like you and I have been having this discussion like for the last 10 years. Yes. Like this, this, this conversation is nothing new. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's been going on since we've known each other basically. Right, 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 right. Um, yeah. So I've only recently, started to tell family and people like when I go to the dentist or get a haircut, I've only very recently started to tell them that I do YouTube for a living. Mm -hmm. And, uh, 
that's just because I'm slowly starting to like accept it and you know see what people have to say about it really I guess yeah I, I guess the re the reason why I bring all this up is like you know because Bill and I were talking about this earlier and about how you know when I when I discovered today that you know YouTube was you know your your main thing your 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 source of income and all that but you were still like you know you were you know you were I guess you I guess you felt like a little bit embarrassed about admitting that kind of thing at least to strangers yes right and maybe even yeah you know, maybe or maybe even close people close people to you and um and, not my, and my remark was like kind of like well why should you feel that way like you like you you said that you felt like you were a loser, right? Yes. And I and I was shocked because like to me, I'm like you're a winner. Like you, you're you're no longer doing the nine to five. Like you're you're your own boss. Like you make your own schedule. You get to make what you want to make. You know you're having you're having fun what you're doing. You know and like I guess it's I guess I just kind of wanted to highlight that and just you know maybe try to help you get over that kind of that hump you know that like that you know it's like it's okay that you're you know what you're doing like it's normal it's okay you know and i'm sure like and i'm sure you probably have fans out there that like really appreciate your channel or and you being you yeah i've i've heard people say that they they relate to a lot of the stuff i say and uh it helps them on bad days. It helps them to not feel alone. And that's really cool to hear that stuff. But yeah, it's it's very hard to even, like even when I hear that stuff, it's not enough to, I guess, knock the embarrassment I have for doing it. But I'm slowly starting to overcome that and just embrace it, which is like, yeah, like I said, it's a very recent thing. What if, what if you met a girl and y'all were hitting it off and you asked her what she did, and she said that, like, YouTube was her thing. Oh, I'd be absolutely pleased and uh, amazed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like, well, well, yeah, that would just be, uh, there would be nothing, no, no ill feelings at all about what she does for a living. But that's just me judging somebody else, though. But it's so many people nowadays, like, like they think nothing of, like, you know, like, going on Instagram or doing a TikTok of themselves, like, you know. So, like, like what, what do you, like, what do you think is the hang-up for you? Because, like, it's, it's so, it feels like such a normal thing. And maybe it's, and maybe it's a generational thing. Maybe you're just, like, do you think you're just like a little bit older than them and it's like you're maybe stuck in like an older mentality of like Yeah, I think it's a little bit of that. I think it's a, definitely a little bit of that and also just the fact that I am still single and I do not have anybody in my life right now. Well, I mean at the moment, but you but at you know for a while you weren't single. So it's yes. not, it's, it's not like and you were still doing this right weren't you doing yes, this? yes so i mean and obviously you know you said that you 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 met this person through that yes so like that's obviously not like a, a hang up to to meet someone like it you can meet someone <laughs> yeah you're, if you're getting paid by youtube yeah playing video games yeah it's just it's a I guess you would call it a cognitive fallacy where like i'm thinking about it all wrong in some way um but yeah like you said it, it stems from the generational thing and it stems from the loneliness of being single i think where like i just always assume the worst that like whatever anybody's gonna think about me if i tell them this it's gonna be the worst possible thing right hmm. i mean i guess you, if you feel like I guess if you feel that strongly about it, I mean, have you ever just told someone like, "Oh, I'm a YouTuber," just said like, "I just said, just said, hey, I'm a YouTuber. Here's my channel," you know? No, I've always kind of elaborated more on what it is I do on YouTube. No, what well, I'm saying, like, maybe, maybe it's just saying like, "You're, hey, I'm a YouTuber," and just 
Like, maybe if you if you're that like kind of, I don't know, like, you know, cognizant of it, like maybe just start with that, and then if they elaborate, be like, oh, you know, like, like you know, I play, I play, I stream video games, you know, mm-hmm. and maybe and maybe just leave it at that. Just you know, like, hey, I'm a YouTuber. Oh yeah, and I play video games. You know, and then. Like, yeah, I don't know. I see, like, I still feel a little bit of trepidation there because, like, it's the video game thing. It, it must be something from our generation where there's something I'm holding on to where it's like, that's not cool. You know, like... But it is. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. I need to I need to get over it, I guess, because uh, I'm obviously, like, I'm aware every day how lucky I am to be where I'm at. And, uh, yeah, I'm, like, super thankful and amazed that I could even do this, but I don't know. It's it's just a weird... It's, like, it's always there to second-guess yourself, I guess, if that makes any sense. Like, there's always, like, a voice in your head to be like, yeah, but not really. But maybe that's depression. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if that's, you know something beyond what we're talking about. Hmm. So, when, look, when the moment happened when you realized you could, that YouTube was going to be able to pay you enough to, like, leave your, your normal job, like, you didn't, did you not think at that moment, like, oh, like, 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 like this is my calling, or like, this, like, like, this does, this does work. Do you not? Did you never feel anything like that? Where like it's like, oh, like, like, I'm because I'm surprised like that, that that didn't do it for you. Where you're like, like, it's like, oh, like, like I've I've made this channel and like there's there's people that like like my content, and they like me, and you know they like me enough that you know like my YouTube channel is you know it it can now afford me enough to you know leave my job and like I can now make this like my my job like like the, like what like what more has to be done <laughs> like this like this jeff bezos has to show up <laughs> and be like <laughs> yeah I, like what 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 is missing <laughs> i don't know it's just <laughs> what has to happen <laughs> i think like there never really was that moment i think that's what it was it was like i kind of quit my job on a limb hoping that this would pan out and it did but i didn't know that it was going to and uh are you like so like i guess i'm i'm, I guess I'm, I'm still trying to like narrow down like like what like what it will take for you to like accept that this is a normal thing like it's an okay thing and yeah, I think honestly what it would take is for that woman to come into my life and be like, "Yes, you are enough and I want to be with you for the rest of my life." kind of thing. Okay, well, now, I mean, <laughs> okay, now, okay, now, okay, that so okay, so how how much like how much have you like done in in that in that area? To find someone, you met. We talked about. So you mentioned that you use some apps. You kind of like. Yes. You tried looking around, um, and then I I mentioned that you should try Meetup, mm-hmm. which is a website that allows you to uh, do events, activities with a group of strangers, and you know it's maybe you'll meet someone. So I mean I think like I think it's it's gonna take something like that like like I don't I mean I think with apps it's I I think it's it's possible to find someone but I think you'd have better luck doing social stuff and just you know meeting a stranger and talking to them. And then, like, letting them know, get to know you, you know, who for who you are. And then before, you, you know, they ask you, like, oh, hey, like, what do you do? And you're like, and you, then you can just, you can just say, like, hey, like, 
I'm a I'm a content creator or I'm a YouTuber, you know? And then and then and then go from there. And if and then if, and she says if she says like, oh like well what do you do? And you're like, well, you know, I'm I'm like I'm I'm into video games and so you know, I make you know videos about that. And if, if she if, if she doesn't accept that or she doesn't like that or whatever, then you just you just walk away and I mean, then you'll know that that's for that that person is not the one for you. I mean, that's mm. that's just how it is, um, you know. Until until you find the yeah, until you find a person that's like, oh, cool, like you do YouTube, that's awesome. You do video games, cool. I like video games, you know. I'm, I mean, it, it's just it's just all you can really do is, like, if if you want to find that person, then I mean, it's you got to try to find that person. You. Like you can't just say like, oh, I, I want to find this person that's an accept me for me, but like if the attempt isn't there to actually like talk to someone and you know get to know them and for them to get to you know you, then it's like then you can't you, you can't be just to be stuck in this rut. You can't just be like. You know, like, oh, it's just, it's this isn't a cool thing. It's like, well, it's like okay, but you get to eat, you're gonna have to like just meet people, people, and talk to people, and you know, um, and and you know, honestly, it might even just even be like, I think if you maybe got more comfortable saying to people that, not even other girls that you're you might be interested in, if you just said to other people, like, hey, oh, what do I do, and like, and you're able to say like, hey, I'm I'm a YouTuber confidently i think maybe that's the first step if, yeah. you, if you're able to say that like well i'm a youtuber or you know or i'm and you're able to say and then you're just like oh well, i know I'll, i make you know, i do videos about video games are you able, if you're able to say that like confidently and you know happily like i think that's the first step yeah and i and would then, agree and, and then and then you can look for someone and and be like okay like like you know you know, then you could tell them like, "Oh, this this is me. This is what I do." And then, if they're not cool with it or whatever, then I mean, there's other people out there. Yeah, it makes sense. I I would agree that that's a first step is to feel confident in the in the uh, the choices I've made up to this point. I guess. And I don't. It's, yeah, and I guess this is what this is what baffles me is like I don't understand why you're not because it's like, like. Like I said before, I think I think you are winning. Like you, you do you're able to do your own thing, and your own thing is is fun to you, and like like you should you should you should take that to heart. You should be like like I I, I am living the dream. Like you are, in a sense, I guess. Yeah. No, there's no. I guess <laughs> you are. Say so you are. <laughs> yeah. It's just. Classic me saying I guess all the time. I know. I don't know. I don't know. I, don't I know. guess. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, is there anything else you want to talk about, or should we wrap things up? You think? Um, I guess we'll. we'll I'll, I'll ask you one more question, kind of. Uh, okay. I I don't know, and I I don't know if you've um, I apologize. I don't know if you've if you've answered this question before, but where. I guess for your your listeners, where do you feel your channel is going? What would you want to see? Oh, well, it's it's kind of in a slump right now, but I hope that it continues to grow. And I would like to see myself continue to find content to play because I've I've covered my childhood backlog by now. And uh, I would like to branch out into the games that I missed as a child that are still good old days games to other people. And, you know, I still want to play the new games when they come out, the rem- remasters and remakes that we're getting and all kinds of things. And uh, what I most want to do is collaborate with other YouTubers and potentially meet some people at conventions and... Yeah, just see what kind of social life this can bring. That's that's where I'm at right now. Is like the I'm on the the cusp of the social life part of it, if that makes any sense. Okay. 
Cool. Um, yeah, I, I hope that that happens. I think, and I think I think you'll get to all of that. I think your your channel's moving in the right direction. Um, so yeah, but uh, so thanks for having me on. Yeah, thank you for it's been awesome catching up seven years later. <laughs> Apologize for the audio quality. Yeah, <laughs> it's probably awful. Yeah, we don't know. We're using one microphone here, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Um. But thank you guys very much for watching, and I appreciate you. If you want to see more of Dan, I will let you know if he gets his own YouTube channel one day in the future. I don't know. Or if I come back here, or yeah. if you invite me back, yeah. Yeah, we could do some multiplayer stuff, definitely. I don't know. We will have to see. But uh, I will let you guys know. And thank you once again for watching, and we will see you later. Take care. Bye.